Hey there, hope this message finds you well and healthy. We're gonna take a look here at a couple earthquakes that have happened within the La Palma region, which the USGS is reporting upon. But before I do that, I just wanna extend my gratitude and thanks to everyone who's been viewing the videos recently, leaving feedback. There's been a fairly large influx in subscribers as well and that does not go unnoticed. I really appreciate that. Kind of reaffirms the fact that what I'm doing is actually helpful to people and informative. And that's the whole purpose here. To enable the individuals who are interested in learning to find the data, apply a method for analysis, and then draw their own conclusions. It's extremely valuable in this age of information to be able to do that yourself because the herd mentality, the groupthink, following the narratives is so prolific. And a lot of us lack the time and resources to actually do research ourselves. So we end up relying upon people to do the research for us and then present it. So that's why I like to use this format to show what I'm doing when I'm actually coming in here, looking at data, looking at the sources, and ultimately trying to learn and inform myself. So if we take a look at the La Palma region on the USGS latest quakes map, go ahead and zoom in, change our filter to 30 days which reveals 30 days of quake data, all magnitudes in the US and magnitude 4.5 or above worldwide or magnitude five as the, the finer print actually says, which is published by the USGS. But clearly that's not a hard and fast rule because we're looking at two earthquakes here at La Palma one of which is a magnitude 4.6 on October 26th the more recent quake is a 4.3, November 10th. I look at this map throughout every day, and I can guarantee you that this quake was not here on that day. I, I don't even think it was there within a week of this occurring. So it makes sense that there are delays in reporting <clears throat> by the USGS when you're looking at an area outside of their kind of like their region of authority. But what it also does confirm is the fact that the USGS is sourcing data from stations they don't own, likely with organizations they partner with and have agreements about information sharing and making that information public. So we have this magnitude 4.3 quake. I'm just going to open this up in a new tab and show you just a, a couple little tips here to get more information and unveil the source of the data. <clears throat> One of those ways is by looking at the technical details for the quake and we can see that there's origin information provided. The source is the US, which is interesting because obviously this is the USGS site, but if we drill down into the details, and then look at the magnitudes tab. We can see there are nine stations which are part of this pool of data that feeds into the USGS publishing this quake activity on their site. So we have nine stations, all of which have their unique codes. We can see the data is listed here. And I found it interesting, uh, I'd, I have no idea what these codes mean, so I just thought I'm going to copy this and drop it into a Google search. We can see that the very first result here relates to the Puerto Rico seismic network. Okay, Puerto, we Puerto Rico is technically part of <clears throat> the United States, so that would fall within the scope of what the USGS, I guess, considers an authority. Uh, but then there was another one, which I noticed 
I was just going down the list, basically copying the state, the channel name, dropping it into Google and see what the results were. And I came down to this one, did a search, and I noticed this global seismograph, <coughs> seismograph network, FDSN.org, the International Federation of Digital Seismograph Networks. And I just did a quick search on this page. There's no results. No results. Oh, Kirk. This one shows up. Kazakhstan. Not within the authority of the USGS so far as I can tell, being a US citizen. So clearly what the USGS is including within their pool of data that's used to feed into what the scientists are basing their publications off of and, and the data that they're actually putting out for the public. This is coming from sources outside of the US. So what that tells me is the United States has agreements with these outside organizations in order to source data and then reference it whenever they're posting activities on the latest activity map. An interesting thing to note here is why not source the data from the IGN? Perhaps there is some underlying issue in the relationship between the USGS and the IGN. I'm not entirely sure, but <clears throat> anyone who's been following the earthquake activity around the Canary Islands recently knows that, well, look, less than three and a half hours ago, there was a 4.7, and it had one felt report. This is a fairly significant quake, and there have, has been activity like this essentially every single day for quite some time. Obviously, there's days when we don't see that level of activity, but we had a 4.7, there was a 4.3. I like to just sort by the region, and then you can see the full list of everything within like the past, I don't know if it's eight hours is the threshold for this particular page this filter that's being displayed it's just the <clears throat> the default earthquakes for europe as reported by emsc but they're getting this from ign they do a little bit of data scrubbing as i explained in the grid effect video where they shave off two of the decimals resulting in the grid effect i just don't quite understand why we don't see more of these quakes reported. And I'm not saying it's anything devious or anything conspiratorial. It could just very well be they don't have the resources to go through and analyze the data and then publish it. Because, again, I guarantee you that this quake did not appear anywhere near when it actually occurred. So what that tells me is most likely the resources the USGS has in order to inspect, review, publish the data is likely limited. And they're not going to be reporting stuff immediately. And they talk about that a little bit if you look at the, the read more link here under earthquakes. I won't get into that now. We've looked at that before. But feel free to come take a look. You know, if anyone has doubts about this, the data is here. It's available. Speculation is... It's a risky game. There's always some sort of conspiracy theory that someone can come up with, but at the end of the day, the USGS says that they cannot reliably report outside of their region. They do get information from other sources... That's extremely clear, and we've proven that. But uh, I just don't understand why the gap with the IGN. Why, especially considering the situation there, you've got scientists in the region saying this is a completely unpredictable situation. 
They're warning the people to not become normalized to the fact that these earthquakes are happening on a regular basis. And, uh, you know, if the USGS is going to report on a global scale, then why not take that extra step and maybe focus some resources on an area that's seen a devastating event right now. We're seeing people displaced. We're seeing people evacuated. The banana plantations are a huge part of La Palma and they are being destroyed. It's just what we're seeing here at La Palma with the volcano and the seismic activity is... I've never really witnessed anything like that in my life. Maybe that's just, you know, all the technology that we have now, the ability ability to do live streaming from the island and all the active reporting from folks like Bushcraft Bear. It just changes the game. So speculation, again, can get you into trouble. Data is your friend. Being able to analyze the data is your friend. Making informed decisions is your best friend, and it will help you in every aspect of life. So I hope this has been informative. Feel feel free to share, like, subscribe. None of that really necessarily matters to me, but I do. I do plan to produce more content, and I'd like to take a look at the actual research paper that many people are referencing regarding the landslide potential and tsunami. It's an extremely hot and controversial topic, and there's a, lot of, there's a lot of data out there to refute what the initial report says. So what I would like to do is take a look at that report, present it here for anyone who hasn't really seen it, give an overview of it. Uh, I have gone through and read a good portion of it, as well as look at some of the cases that are made refuting that report. And it's quite interesting. Uh, I don't know a whole lot about that specific field, but I know how to research and inform myself. So please do the same in whatever aspect of life you're interested in. I I did not care at all about this stuff when I was in school. I could not have cared less. But as you get older, you start to realize there are areas of interest which will, uh, they will spur you going outside your comfort zone or spending some time researching in a way that you never really thought you would. And at the end of the day, knowledge is power. So... Continue to share the knowledge. Please drop comments below. I love the feedback. I love to chat with people. Whether it's positive or negative, I accept all of that. And I I take it to heart because I really appreciate everyone's time. I know we all have busy lives. There's a lot going on. <clears throat> and this may seem like a trivial topic to some, but your attention... Again, I appreciate it. It does not fall on deaf ears. Take care. Peace.